Hi everyone, my name is Jill Kane. Thanks so much for joining me here. Um, my uh, little quick project here, my demo, is um, about water using watercolor on watercolor paper to make some shapes that um, you then cut out of the paper and the way I was taught about this is to leave a little bit of the border showing through from whatever paper you use to paint these circles. Uh, this idea was introduced to me through um, my participation in the Minnesota Visual Journal Collective. We're a group of uh, people who love collage, love painting, love working with those mediums in journals. We meet once a month at a local independent art supply store in St. Paul. And last year in February 2022, our volunteer leaders uh, led us through this process of making these shapes. Um, they found this idea through Christine Nazaro. Many of you may know her. Um, she is at soul underscore positive on Instagram. She's really great examples of this technique, making a wide variety of shapes. Um, she's got some really lovely hearts using this technique that she writes some really encouraging words on and they're just they're just really fun. So <clears throat> I had a lot of fun um, making some of these shapes and I've just, I, I still have some left over from projects I worked on last year, but um, I just love thinking about them in different ways, you know, maybe cutting them in half and having one half one color, one half another color, making a new circle. Um, I decided that I wanted to use them as a way to illustrate the nasturtium leaves in my altered garden journal. So I literally made all of these leaves while sitting out on my patio on a really beautiful June day. And once they dried, I cut them out and then I went and went ahead and used a Posca paint pen to mimic the veining of the nasturtium leaves. I would say um, you can kind of see some variation in, in how that worked with using the Posca pen. Um, in the future, I would probably use acrylic paint for that instead. I, I just didn't love how this performed on top of um, the watercolors that I chose to use for this project. So, um, I'm going to show you a little bit about the products I'm using to make these. Um, first off, I'm using this pretty affordable um, watercolor paper from Target. I've, I've had this for a long time. I'm not even sure if they sell anything like this anymore, but it has a really nice weight to it. And I, I, I think I, I like that the paper isn't pure white. It's, it's a little ivory. Um, it's a little easier in the eyes, maybe. And then I'm just using these Statler watercolor paints. They are um, definitely a liquid um, formation of watercolor. I've also had these for a very, very long time, and I'll be honest with you, the first time I used them <laughs> was making these last year. Um, and they they are a thicker, I, I kind of view them as possibly a thicker watercolor. They, to me, they behave a little bit more like wash. Um, I liked that. I know that others in our class used a wide variety of different watercolors and um, our, our circles uh, all turned out a bit differently and it was really fun um, to see how that, um, how that occurred. So when I went to go work on the nasturtiums, I, I did try um, some newer, um, more, I guess, maybe traditional dry watercolors that are more expensive than these um, that I purchased for myself last year. And I, I didn't love the effect. And it, it could have been a wide variety of things, maybe my own expectation about what I wanted them to look like. So <clears throat> I scrapped that idea and went back to using the deep green and the light green to make those leaves. So I have a page uh, started here a bit of some pretty bright plum, rose, kind of orange coral colors um, happening here. This one, I, I painted that rose color in the center first and then after it dried, I, I went back with more of a scarlet red and 
kind of built out a little bit um, beyond my initial circle and I, I really like how that um, is looking. So <clears throat> this, this is so easy. I'm just using a number six pen, or I'm sorry, a number six paintbrush. And I know I'm breaking many rules here by um, probably contaminating my paints by <laughs> touching the tip of my brush into the paint tube sometimes, but so be it, right? We can't bake rules. Why are we doing art? Um, so here's just some Prussian, yeah, some Prussian blue. Got it on pretty thick over on this side. You can probably tell. Thinner over here. Um, there, the sky really is the limit with, with this. You know, you can do some paint mixing while it's wet get a different color, you can wait to dry, have some more um, kind of layered color on top of it. What you've previously <clears throat> painted. I guess I, I really like the layers of some areas of opacity and some areas of transparency. And uh, you know, my in my mind, I, I'm painting these now thinking I will use these next year, in my, or this year, this season in my garden journal. And I think with the <clears throat> opacity and transparency, it really kind of gives the idea of flower petals and what happens when light reflects off certain parts of a flower um, based on where the petals are. So uh, this is this is a super fun, Kind of meditative way of painting. I think this is a portable project. Um, like I said, I, I worked on it outside and, and of course it was in the sun so this all dried pretty quickly um, but really was a lot of fun and I encourage you to give it a try. So thanks so much to Suzanne and all the work she's doing with Strawberry Moon. Um, it's really a great community to be a part of and I, look, I know that I look forward to each new edition of the magazine coming out. And I'm just really grateful that um, she's finding a way to connect all of us together through a publication. Thanks so much. Have a great day.